So what we can do with the such signal? There is one very simple processing called correlation. And we can use it for uh, determining the direction of the sound which is coming to the board. Physically, our board look like, looks like this. We have two microphones with a distance of 2.1 centimeter. And if the speed of the sound is uh, finite, and it is uh, roughly 340 meters per second, uh, we can determine this angle, so which direction the sound is coming to the board, just by delay of the sound between one microphone and another microphone. So very simple mathematics will give us from the delay in time, we can compute the delay in distance. With delay in distance, we can easily compute the angle. There is nothing magic inside, just a matter how do we measure the delay between two signals. Considering that the signal in left and right will be very, very similar, but not completely the same, because both microphones can have roughly different, uh, roughly different uh, amplification. Also, there could be some noise around, which is coming from another direction. There could be some reflections. So these signals will be very similar, but not the same. Okay, so we need to know what is the delay between similar signals. Uh, and how to do it with uh, DSP? The cross correlation function is uh, almost ideal to do that. So you are, you, we are getting one signal which is left, second signal which is right, and we are doing a cross correlation function, which is again nothing else than a lot of multiplications and a lot of summaries or uh, additions together. And the result may look something like this, but it depends on the really on the signal which you get. In this slide, it's maybe more uh, self-explanatory. So if you do this equation, you are actually, this n means the delay between two signals. So for every n, you get a result, and the, uh, the result depends on the delay. So for sure, the biggest output of the cross correlation will be when the signal matches, or the, when the signals match. And uh, if there was initially a delay between these signals, you need another delay to compensate it. And if we are able to determine this delay to compensate it, we got our delay between two signals, and that's it. So to determine our delay, we are just seeking for maximum in the result of cross correlation function. Okay, nothing else. So to determine the angle, we just use left and right, put it to correlation function, take the output, which will be another array, and seek for, search for maximum. If we have the maximum, we have got the delay, and that's it. So briefly, two operation, cross correlation and maximum find, and that's it. And this is what we do uh, in our software. So, uh, well, if we have the, the delay, then we can simply acquire the, the angle through this uh, very simple equation. So, we can run it now in the STM32. So, uh, our demo is based on few flex. In the main loop, after extraction of the left and right signal, we are checking a uh, few flex and doing something. So, um, these flex are also visible in the live watch window. So, you can change the behavior of the software without recompiling it, just changing the value in the live watch window here. Uh, well, out of the box, you should get the do correlation flag set to one and the others set to zero, okay? But uh, only this part of the while loop or on the main loop is executed. If this flag is set, I'm just calling the correlate function and that's it. So uh, uh, this is the function from the CMCS library. So running the correlation function as a, as a user, all I need to do is to call one function from the library and that's it. So particularly easy from a user perspective or programmer perspective. As the argument, it takes left and right array 
and this is the output. So once the software goes through this function, I have my correlation function computed. And uh, after the breakpoint, just by simple loop, I search for the maximum. And my maximum is set to this max correlation index. So, uh, well, you can remove the breakpoint, leave it running. And actually this, um, this index is shown on the LCD screen as well. On the first line, there is the delay is uh, line, which uh, shows normally zero. But if you talk to the board from left side or right side, it should show minus one or plus one. Please open the Sala process two and uh, run it by F5. And you should get the same result as before, but another window should appear with the cross correlation uh, result. Uh, on the top, we just download the correlation result from STM32 and show it on the screen. On the bottom, I took the left and right channels and I compute the correlation in the PC, so by the SILAP uh, correlation function. If everything works well, you should see the same uh, behavior of the cross-correlation function. Uh, the only difference can be the amplitude. You see 100 something and uh, 5 million something in the PC. This is because uh, the STM32, the CMC library function, is truncated every result needs to fit into 16-bit value, okay? We are, we are working with 16-bit uh, numbers. So every intermediate result must fit into 16-bit value, so it's truncated every single addition. While here we are keeping the full, um, the full scale of all the numbers, okay? So we don't need to take care so much about the scale, but what is important is the maximum, okay? and where the maximum is. So if you had the maximum here, the signal would be very left. If it would be on the left side, it would be very right. Okay, so this is how this works. So uh, typically, if you don't know if your algorithm is working well or not, you should always make the copy of your result, show it, uh, compare it with the simulation, and only then you can say if it's working or not. Well, in this case, we are able to measure quite huge delay in a lot of samples. But in our case, because the micros, microphones are very close to each other, in reality, we have seen that delay can be only minus one or plus one. If the sound was uh, slower, it could be better, but uh, not in our case. So, uh, this example is very nice to show cross-correlation as it is, but uh, we have seen that the CP usage is 10% or around, on, at least on the screen, I have 10.6. And this is because you need to compute the whole bunch of the data, which if we are uh, expecting the delay minus one to plus one is not really necessary. Okay, this is just more to explain how the cross correlation function is working. So in practice, to if you really want to make this direction, sound direction elaboration, it's enough to have 32 samples or 64 samples to really get the delay in, in quite small amount of, of data. And you can, ch you can change it then in the source code and uh, you could see that the CPU load will decrease much far below 1%. If you also uh, examine a little bit the script, so we kept the same, we plotted the left and right signal, and then uh, I also plot the STM correlation, which is loaded from the hex file generated by our IAR. And then I compute the correlation by SILAP. So here it's uh, extremely easy. One function, two arguments, I got the result, and I plot it below the previous one. And what I do is also that I compute the delay, which uh, in SILAP is very easy. I just call function max, 
and it will give me the index of the maximum. So then uh, in the console you have the variable browser, something like a watch window, and this uh, delay here is minus one, which I computed by Scilab, and I also uh, computed the delay of the correlation generated by STM32, it's also minus one. So uh, in this particular case, uh, we have seen that the simulation works pretty well. And here we come to the limit of the fixed point. So you see that if there was nothing set around the, the, the time when I was hitting the breakpoint, you see that the signals are very small. Well, this is the correlation function, but the signals left and right, let's see what were the values. Uh, well, hardly 60, okay? We are speaking about 16-bit format, so 60 where the boundaries are 32,000 something. So very, very small numbers at this time. And if we multiply small numbers, what we get, even smaller number. So uh, the cross-correlation function will look like this. We hardly reach 10 in amplitude. So here we can demonstrate very nicely the limit of the fixed point. Okay, the result is pretty poor compared to what you get if you compute in, uh, well, never ending numbers in PC. So even from the small numbers, you can get quite nice result if you don't truncate all the time. So here, again, for audio signals, if you want to make it working for loud signals and small signals, it would be better maybe to use a float point. So again, this is quite useful to visualize that you can immediately see that there is something wrong and you need to think about what is wrong and uh, all the consequences. So what we have seen, the delay works quite well. We are able to see the angle, but the angle is uh, only equals to 90%, 90 degrees or plus minus 90 degrees. Why? Because uh, the sampling rate is 16 kilohertz and the speed of sound at 16 kilohertz is exactly 2.1 centimeter. So uh, it's not, uh, it's not uh, by chance that we put it uh, by 2.1 centimeters. If you decrease the correlation samples, so how many samples you use as the input for the cross correlation? You can use 16, 32, 64, well, with 16, we have seen that uh, the detection is not always the best one because uh, you cannot uh, estimate all the frequencies. Then it depends really on the input signal. So uh, you can use uh, 3264, it works quite well. Still keeping the CPU load much, much sl uh, smaller than if we are working over the full bunch of the data every time. Now we can, uh, we have seen the cross coloration. So how we use it in real life. With the cross correlation, this is the easiest one. You have one function from the library, you run it, you get the result. That's all you need. Very convenient for the user. Just one, uh, maybe one command. If you look for the documentation, there is already a reference on the online, but also offline. Uh, and it is quite well described in the comments. So you get all the description, what it does. And for all the functions, you see that the suffix is showing the numbers or the number format you are targeting. So all the functions exist with variants underscore Q8, Q15, Q31, and float32. So the cross correlation function is very easy to use. You just put arguments of the inputs and you got the output. Let's have a look on the filtering maybe. So for the filtering, uh, the easiest one to, to deal with is the fair filter. So finite impulse response. Actually, it's very similar to the correlation, but it just you, it works over the history of the data. Because it has some history, it needs to have a handle which is pointing to this history. Okay, some previous state of the signals. So for the filters and FFT, you need to initialize them first. 
Later on, when we look into the code, before my main loop, I'm initializing the filters and the FFT instances. So working with the filters is as easy as with correlation, but you just need to initialize it before this handle. And then you just pass the source and you pass the pointer to the destination and how long is your filter. And that's pretty much all you need to do to perform a filtering. So we can have a look uh, on the filtering. Uh, let's have a look uh, or let's take an, the easiest example is a low pass filter. I think we have developed a filter with uh, one kilohertz uh, cutoff frequency. So uh, you were once you can enable one of those filters at a time uh, in the live watch window. So you don't need to recompile anything. In the live watch, you just enable do filter IR or do filter fir, and the main loop will change the behavior so it will filter also the, the signals. Then you can hear the change of the sound in the headphones. So it should be much more, um, there should be much less frequencies in the output. Okay, and you can change, check the CPU load, how much does it take to compute such filters.